Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to 5 and 9 in a one-stop co-op shop, where I go over five things you need to know about a game in about nine minutes or less. I'm gonna shoot for that. Today, I'm taking a look at Tesseract from Spurk and Dagger Games. This one is for one of four players, fully cooperative, dice manipulation, crisis management style, like a pandemic style game, but really focusing on those dice, adjusting them, putting them together in sets and runs, and firing off combos to solve that puzzle before the world is destroyed. So how good is that dice manipulation? Are the combos powerful and satisfying? Let's go to the videotape and find out. Disclaimer, I was provided a review copy of Tesseract by the publisher. My number five, a very, very clear pro, the production quality. Everything looks great, it's well made. The publisher is known for games like Tower of Madness or The Spill, gimmicks uh, that draw in the eye. This one I think is the best of the bunch that I've seen so far. You take out the sleeve at the beginning of the game. You got this Tesseract thing. The dice are nice and colorful. The pips are visible even with all of the symbology there. And the Lazy Susan works pretty good. Uh, you just can't jostle it too much, but for the most part, if you're somewhat careful, uh, you have a stable, fun platform to play with. Big ups. My number four, a mix is the overall thematic presentation. So there is a theme of the game. This is some kind of unstable cube and it is slowly uh, as we draft dice and as the bot uh, also withdraws dice, it's drawn down. And once it gets to the bottom of the platform, then that would be one of the game's lose conditions and supposedly the world explodes. Uh, there are also characters, so every character, every player is gonna have a character and they all have these kind of sci-fi motif, but really, <laughs> it's just a list of powers. We'll get to that. I mentioned the theme because this game, especially with this central componentry, is designed to bring in all sorts of gamers. It's useful to know what they're sitting down to. A game with a theme disappears as soon as you draw the first die. It is an abstract puzzler. Now I have something to say about the puzzle nature of this later. But for me as a thematic gamer, I love it when cooperative games in particular, these crisis management games, give me stuff to remember, a daring rescue, a defeating of the monster at the last bit. This isn't gonna give you that. This is gonna give you an abstract sense of puzzly goodness. So mix for me, your mileage may vary. My number three, a pro overall, is the threat that the game poses in terms of the drawing down of the dice. So at the end of every player turn, you're gonna draft the lowest die, uh, that is visible on the test rack. I'm gonna roll it. So then, ooh, no, I got a five. If I add uh, a third cube over here, then I would progress the game's lose condition, which all that does is progress this track one. If the track reaches seven, then you lose. The mechanic of that isn't very exciting or visceral, but I like the way this plays out overall. Roll the die, check for your breach, you're good to go. And then once you get to the bottom of a, a column, then you'll trigger some kind of event. So I like the way that the game paces out the events. This is modular, the harder the uh, under tile is, the more deadly events are gonna happen. I think the bot is really, really well implemented, very smooth, great stuff. My number two, I'm not sure how I feel about this one, so I'm gonna go mix overall, is the pacing of Tesseract. So in a crisis management game, usually they throw you right in and you're dealing with uh, whatever's happening and then there is an escalation, a ramp up from there, but you're also escalating and building up. In Tesseract, it's like that. Uh, you're gonna be drafting your dice and uh, slowly kind of going towards the game's overall win condition, which is to fill this whole thing, which is 24 slots. The short term is you're dealing with this. If there's building up too much, you'll get breaches. In the early game, this takes a long time to build up. In addition, there are a lot of options here. Now, some can regard that as a positive. They feel very constrained in that more narrow crisis management mold. Here, you have a lot of ways that you can fill up your personal area. Do I build a set? Do I build a run? Do I get different colors? Do I focus on this? How do I use my uh, player character? There's so many ways to go. The question is, is it a little bit too loose, especially in that early game? Once I start filling up this containment unit though, that's where the excitement really ramps up. So if I were to complete a column like I did over here, I would get some kind of effect. Or if I were to complete a row uh, by making some kind of set or a match, take my word for it, then I could take uh, this card and it is some kind of like game breaking power that turns around uh, and gives me a leg up relative to all the crisis that has been piling up. So the end game is very exciting. I, like we are used to these crisis management games getting there. Once again, I leave that to the audience to figure that out yourself. 
my number one, a clear pro overall for those who are looking for that experience. It is the overall puzzle of the game. It throws a lot at you, puts a lot of pressure on you in terms of both, you know, the shape of the crisis as well as how you deal with it. So there's an action where you can adjust the die. If you adjust off the one, you get rid of it. So do I want to spend time adjusting, getting rid of lots of dice? Do I kind of put everything together in one pile and, you know, uh, let that explode and clear out different numbers? That's also a viable strategy. Where does my power lead me? But is my power lead me to take lots of dice off the cubes or transfer them? Uh, how do I use my personal area when I'm completing sets? Which dice do I place in the containment unit? Which dice do I keep around? There's also a mechanic where I can use these dice, roll them, and get some one-time power-ups. How powerful are they going to be? Can I wait and build up and get the more powerful power-ups? Literally, that whole decision-making matrix happens on every single turn. So if that sounds appealing to you, then Tesseract is the game for you. Final thoughts time, Tesseract is fun. The question is whether it is your fun. If you are looking for any kind of thematic experience, something that resonates with you on a narrative level after you've played, or uh, if you have a difficult time with that pacing issue that I mentioned in the review, where there may be too many options, not enough guidance uh, to get you to that big, powerful end game, then this one might not be for you. But if you are looking for that puzzle, if you enjoy the tactile feel of dice and you enjoy the lazy Susan aspect, uh, the production elements bring you into what is ultimately a very well-made, satisfying puzzle, then Tasseract might be for you. I hope you found this review helpful. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop, reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.